I hope you've enjoyed Emergent Play. I've decided to take a moment afterwards to discuss with my guest hosts some of the ideas and concepts behind the series. Uh, well, neither of us are really particularly good musicians, uh, but we wanted to record our own intro. That way we didn't have to worry about anyone else's uh, ownership of what we were using. So, yeah, we wrote our intro in, what, 15 minutes? Not even. Um, the basic idea was just to do a sliding scale, just from low to high and then back down from high to low. And For you, to I, to, yeah. I just played a couple chords. I, I'm terrible. But, yeah, uh, took us a few minutes to write and then maybe 20 minutes to actually record it once, which actually which turned out well. And understanding that it's like 13 seconds long, maybe maybe 11 once you cut it down, tells you that it took us a lot of takes. And it gives us a solid understanding for the poor bastards who have to do this on a day-to-day -day basis in the studio. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So, you can actually tell a little bit by watching the first videos what the original concept for this series was. It was actually supposed to be the two of us working together on that. Uh, we would produce one video, the other person would respond to those ideas and would go back and forth. Yeah, original idea, response, original idea, response. Exactly. Uh, unfortunately, you weren't able to commit to it at the time, work and yeah. the like. Uh, so I took over the project entirely because I didn't want to see it like die on the operating table before it even started. No, we. I mean, it wasn't that it was a bad idea. Scheduling was just a bitch yeah. for me. And Honestly, I think that concept still has a lot of value. I think other people yeah. out there could, could add a lot to that by having these dedicated uh, minds going back and forth where you get to know the personalities of people involved, what their gaming habits are, and just kind of work off of each other's uh, off each other's personalities, especially if the two people know each other, as we do. Yeah, right. exactly, and have game together. So we know what, each, what, what we like. Um, the big thing that made it interesting was that we still had very different views on how things work, yeah. what topics were of interest, and what we felt we could really speak to authoritatively, which gave us a great sounding board mm -hmm. for starting a topic and then letting the other person respond with either criticism or sometimes it was the original idea was just to be agreement. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't often that we were gonna we weren't gonna do good cop bad cop necessarily. But yeah, you did actually shape it as well before it started because as you might remember, my original conception was to not allow comments to videos or yeah, I don't know if yeah. I cared about the rating system, but like I was originally not gonna yeah. allow comments. And which, I ixnayed that right away. Um, which yeah, I admit it was a bad idea, but. At the time when I looked online, a lot of what content I did randomly find, there was just a lot of the usual negativity that you see. YouTube in, commenters, yeah, YouTube for the most comment, part. Yeah. Which I did not realize that this that there was a community at the time that had a very positive set of comment, commenters and uh, views. But yeah, it was good to get the engagement we did get. Yeah, engagement's critical and that allows people to feel like they're participating, which they are, and shape future episodes. which. Absolutely. Hopefully people, people felt they had uh, an ability to do. Yeah, I do like how it turned out, obviously, and a lot of the ideas that went into it turned out working very well for it. Yeah. I do wish it had gone in the way I'd originally conceived, but hey, who knows, maybe projects in the future may go that way. Well, and uh, with things going the way they are, we are going to have a distance, mm -hmm. so maybe that becomes a format that makes more sense and works out we'll for see. us. When I first started uploading videos, I actually expected a somewhat negative response to a lot of what I did. This is because in a lot of communities, I've found that people interested in the more story or indie games are often not very welcome by those who are not. It's kind of the way a lot of niche hobbies tend to work. But I was actually very surprised. I got a very positive response from quite a few different people. And uh, it wasn't just in the comments. I had videos right away uh, by other channels telling me that they really liked this new one coming along and liked a lot of the new ideas. And it was actually very encouraging. You know, it actually kind of made me feel a little bit dumb for wanting to turn off comments originally. So I'm at this party, and I'm talking to a friend of mine about a game that I'd just been playing. I think it was My Life with Master. And I'm talking about this, and so this guy I don't know, his ears prick up, and he comes over, and he says, You play D&D? &D? And I said, Oh, well, I don't actually play D&D, &D, but I play lots of other games like that. And so he goes, You mean Pathfinder? Because <laughs> that's it. That's, yeah. that's all that exists. <laughs> and that's kind of indicative. I mean, yeah, it's kind of what's on the shelves and what people are aware of. Yeah. You know, Pathfinder, D&D, &D, White Wolf games, uh, Call of Cthulhu, GURPS, that kind of thing. Yeah. The, the big ones of the hobby are the more well-known. Fiasco is starting to make an appearance. Yeah. More people are knowing about Fiasco. Uh, well, a lot of people are getting into the hobby through Fiasco, which, yeah. which we've talked about. This is a whole thing where 
people don't come from traditional games into story games. There are people with no experience at all that just jump into story games through something like Fiasco or something yeah. that's that's really accessible like that. So it's like a whole new kind of player is emerging. I find that very exciting. Which is <laughs> which is interesting, yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it's one of those things. Like it'd be great to have people, especially if you're getting it into design, to yeah. try different games. In fact, I I would say, and I don't think I'm I don't think this is a, a very controversial statement. Mm. If you're going to design a game. You need to play different games. Yes. It's, it's like if you're going to write a book or if you're going to like design a board game, you need to play a whole bunch of other board games yeah. so that you don't come up with an idea and somebody's like, oh, we're like 10 years past yeah. that. We already did that. No, yeah. absolutely. If you're designing, you should be uh, absorbing as much as humanly possible. Read the books if you can't play the games. Um, yeah. I don't know. That's obvious. Uh, also, I think if you are totally on board with this idea, if you think everyone should play lots of different games, that means you should spread the word. Because a lot of people don't play different games because they've just legitimately never heard of them. And they yeah. won't unless someone says, oh, yeah. hey, I heard that you like this game. Have you heard of this game? Talk you know? about what you like about different games. Yeah, yeah exactly. for sure. And uh, especially with Google Plus nowadays, it's making it easier for people to try new games because yeah. there's the Hangouts gaming thing, which is, which is really picking up. Yeah, amazing. And there's just so many different ways for people to become aware of and engage with and all that type of thing for different games. Yeah. Because what was actually the case for me, I played a lot of traditional games for years, and I wasn't getting everything I wanted out of them. I, yeah. I'd play a game of, of D&D, and maybe I'd have a great session, and then the next one would be like, oh, we just pushed miniatures around for three hours. Yeah, see, this was me. This was me. I had a conversation with a friend of mine, um, who I hadn't really gamed with much, but I knew he was into it, uh, and I said, no, you know what? I think I just don't like RPGs. I think I actually just don't like tabletop gaming. Because mm-hmm. every time I go to play you know, 3.5 or whatever I was playing at the time, you know, I make this really cool character and I, I get really excited and come up with a backstory and, you know, get ready to roleplay. And then when I actually play, I don't know, uh, there's nothing actually there for me. So I guess I just don't like games. So thankfully I was talking to someone who said, have you heard of Burning Wheel? Have you heard of Most Guard? Have you heard of, uh, you know, Wicked Age? And, you know, all kinds of stuff that I ended up being exposed to. Yeah. But and, yeah, I think a lot of people are in that spot. And that was it for me too. I think Burning Wheel was my gateway drug as well. <laughs> and it was just sort of like, oh, you get rewarded for playing your character. Well, yeah. that's interesting. You know, if you drive toward the things that you've written on your character sheet that your character is about, that's what the game is yeah. about for you. And you you gain experience even when you don't succeed. When you fail at something, you yeah, still you learn better, from yeah. it. Like, that's the most amazing concept, you know, because it's kind of like life. And Yeah, I, learning that, from your mistakes. Yeah, lots lots of games do that, but... Yeah, Burning Wheel is an example of, of using a currency to do it, and it, it's complicated how it pushes the type of play that it yeah. wants, but it does push a, a more theatrical, more high adventure kind of a, a style of play. And, and I actually don't didn't really end up playing Burning Wheel very much. Turns out I'm not a huge fan, but I ended up learning about all kinds of amazing games that yeah, I did want to play. For sure, through that one. And yeah. A lot of them are very simple games that you pick up and, and play, mm. which also makes them more accessible because. Especially something like Fiasco. If, if not mm-hmm. all the players show up one night, the, somebody can just be like, well, we don't have Jim, and it's a really important night for Jim, so how about this game? We've got four of us, we can play Fiasco. Yeah, and that's the advantage, too, of having a lot of games that, first of all, you can pick up and play without any prep, and also that have a very low like minimum player count, like games that you can play with one or two players or whatever it is. I'm thinking of, like, Cat. We played Cat with a GM and two players, and it was yeah. awesome. Yeah. yeah, oh yeah, Cat. the Cat's a good example. Uh, lots of games you can play with sh- with a few people. I think, uh, what was it, that game that I picked up but never actually run. Uh, <laughs> there are many of those. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's less now. Yeah. It, it, it helps to find other people that are into this, and you can cultivate players that, that are into this. Uh, don't rest your head. You could right. definitely play Don't Rest Your Head with a very small group. Yeah, well, um, a friend of mine wants to play it with, like, one GM, one player, which there are you not totally a lot do. of games like that. I'm thinking of, like, Murderous Ghosts, some of Emily Care Boss's games. Oh yeah, like uh, Breaking the Ice? Yeah, exactly. There's a Mars Colony game that you can play with two people, but those are kind of a new thing, and they're a new yeah. way to play. And Somewhat, yeah, there have been a few around. Uh, yeah. Slay With Me is one of the older ones, right, right, which right, I've right. played once. <laughs> Although the Conan thing isn't my thing so much, but it was, it was still fun. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, but yeah, another thing that makes it easy is conventions. Because I used to, even before I got into the style of play that I'm in, I used to go to conventions being like, I've never heard of this game, therefore that's what I'm going to pick. Yeah. As opposed to like, oh, this is, you know, a game I have played before. Well, I've played that before. Yeah, and you have the opportunity to play it somewhere else. Yeah, right. if you can go to a gaming convention, you should absolutely do it. Because you are guaranteed to find piles and piles of games you've never heard of. Yeah. And you get to game with different people, which is always a cool experience. Yeah, um, you get to see how other people do it. Yeah. Which is, which is a big thing as well. You can learn so much. Yeah. I actually have the opinion that you can learn just from reading a different style of play. Like, just yeah. seeing the book, how it works, which isn't a perfect example, but it's, it's mm. something. Well, and there are quite a few books that I'm thinking of, like uh, Apocalypse World and Dread and you know, probably others, where almost half the book is just advice on how to run it, which is very yeah. frequently advice on how to run games in general. Yeah, yeah exactly. 